Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. Today we have a video that was a request. I haven't seen this one. They requested specifically that we both react blindly to it and see what we think. So the intro is going to be pretty short <laughs> today because I have nothing to say. Nothing about anything going on over here? I assume there there was a... Oh, you want to talk about your hat? Yeah. People expect you to wear stuff like that now. It's amazing. Reason. And you have to admit the work of this, the person who made it. And we've shouted out to her before. I can't remember. Oh, actually. We'll put the link on but the We'll put the link because she hand makes these incredible. And amazing. she sent us a few. So, you know. It's amazing. I mean, it's yes. an octopus. It is Look an octopus. at this guy. It's okay, uh, unbelievable. Anyway, we gotta get serious here for a second. Let's, yeah, I, I, I honestly, I haven't seen this one. I have no idea what's in it, but uh, they wanted our reaction, so let's give it. Oh, Morbid Midnight is the name of the channel, I guess. Picaninny Ponds is a wetlands national park located in the southeastern tip of the state of South Australia. It was officially recognized as a national park in 1969 and is renowned for the flourishing fauna and flora that inhabit the wetlands within the park. Most notably, however, the park is known for its deep, crystal clear blue waters that flow from underground springs. Yes. The water is so clear, in fact, that from the surface, it is possible to see hundreds of feet down below. This makes picking any ponds a very appealing location for swimmers, photographers, snorkelers and divers alike mm -hmm. beneath the reeds of piccaninny ponds the pond opens up into a large deep sinkhole known as the chasm at about 60 feet below the surface the large sinkhole splits in two on one side is a large open Ooh, cavern illuminated awesome. by beams of sunlight yeah. from above offering That's... spectacular views for divers mm. known as the cathedral Dude. which is the most popular destination for most divers the other side named the dog's leg due to its shape, is a deep open abyss of darkness with the fissure extending seemingly endlessly below. And for the more adventurous divers, this dark section of the cave would of course prove to be the most appealing. In the 1970s, cave diving was still a relatively niche sport yeah. and much less was known about safe navigation through underwater caves yeah. and the effects that descending deep underwater have on the body. And Australia saw a string of cave diving fatalities largely due to underprepared and inexperienced divers diving to depths beyond their capabilities, often making poor decisions while influenced by the effects of nitrogen narcosis. Okay. Nitrogen narcosis is an effect experienced by divers using oxygen, usually with its effects beginning to become noticeable at depths of about 65 feet. I will say that it is true that, you know, back in, in that day, trimix if you will which is introducing helium as yeah. a gas which helium we breathe because it's not narcotic and what he means by narcosis is you're getting a feeling of confusion your 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 mind is basically feels like it's narked on a drug because the air not just oxygen the air i know you use the word oxygen but he means yeah. the air right. becomes narcotic and you know we didn't I don't know. Maybe the military was using it back then, but we certainly weren't. It as, wasn't available to regular divers. As regular divers. So no. we, 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 and many of the other K procedures weren't available then as well. So let's continue. The effects of nitrogen narcosis are commonly compared to alcohol with its yeah. onset marked by a kind feeling of. of relaxation and calm with its intoxicating effects intensifying at greater depths. Mm -hmm. These effects include decreased awareness and reaction times, decreased decision-making capability, overconfidence and a feeling of euphoria yes the safe depth limit for divers using oxygen is generally considered Air. to be around okay. 165 feet with the effects of nitrogen narcosis becoming dangerously overwhelming at depths beyond 165 feet well, wow. For divers descending That's beyond this depth, to be on air. it is crucial that they use not just oxygen, but specifically blended breathing gases to avoid the effects of nitrogen narcosis, like the divers in my other video about pleura. Anyways, nitrogen narcosis was a factor in several accidents in Australia in the early 1970s, including two accidents at Piccaninny Ponds in 1972 and 1974, involving young ill-prepared and inexperienced divers descending too far down into the dog's leg. Between 1972 and 1974, 
eight divers died while freshwater cave diving in Australia, and there was much public outcry about the deaths, with some calling for cave diving to be banned entirely. As a result of these incidents, Australian authorities began to limit the allowed descent depth for recreational diving, posting signage and monitoring dive sites to make sure that divers did not descend past certain depths. One such sign was posted at the top of the dog's leg at Piccaninny Ponds, and it became illegal to descend past that point. This didn't necessarily stop the most hardcore of cave divers, however, and the most defiant and daring divers would continue to explore into the depths of the dog's leg. These new signs and legal limitations, and greater general awareness about the effects of nitrogen narcosis and the dangers of cave diving seemed to prove effective, as after the 1974 incident at Piccaninny Ponds, Australia as a whole would not experience another freshwater cave diving fatality for the rest of the 1970s and into the early 1980s. In the early morning hours of April 7, 1984, two good friends and frequent diving partners named John and Barry descended beneath the reeds and into the sinkhole in Piccaninny Ponds. John, age 28, was a certified class 2 cave diver, while Barry, age 31, was certified in basic scuba, but was never able to get his cave certifications due to his work schedule. Oh Nonetheless, my. he and John had dived in sinkholes together before, so he was not lacking in experience. John had told his wife the previous night that the pair had chosen the early morning because John had an appointment at 10 a.m., but the more likely reason was that they intended to dive beyond the signage and into the dog's leg illegally and wanted to do so before park rangers or other divers populated the site. Later that morning, at approximately 9 a.m., another pair of divers arrived at Piccaninny Ponds and were surprised to find another car already in the parking lot. The pair went over to the pond to check for bubbles rising up from below, but they didn't see any. The men prepared for their planned dive and set off into the chasm at approximately 10.15 a.m. As the duo descended down to the top of the dog's leg, they noticed an oxygen cylinder with two regulators attached to a lanyard and a white guideline descending into the pitch black sump below. The pair began to feel uneasy upon seeing this as they still didn't see any air bubbles coming up from below and the line floated in the water, slacked and lifeless. The pair of divers followed the line further into the dog's leg to a depth of about 150 feet. There, they noticed that the line had been tied off again at a narrow area near the bottom of the dog's leg known as the saddle, and that the line continued down below. As they peered beneath the saddle, the pair could see the faint, eerie glow of headlamps about 50 feet further below them. And so, at this point, they turned around, and after a proper period of decompression, ascended to the surface and alerted authorities of their grim discovery. Mm. Police divers began recovery operations the following day, and upon reaching John and Barry's bodies, it quickly became apparent what had caused their unfortunate deaths. The men were found tangled in a mess of ropes Ooh. at a depth of about 206 feet, well below the legally allowed depth. The men had become oh, so badly rope. tangled in their guideline that the line was found to be wrapped around both their bodies several times and had become stuck in Barry's open clip on his belt, oh. a notably dangerous type of clip to use while cave diving. Yeah, those those clips are called suicide clips for a reason. Um, you know, we, we say that whoever dives with those is like basically looking to die because of that uh they are easy to catching to things they open easy to allow stuff to get in them and then it's hard to get them out and you get tangled so wow yeah there, i mean there's a lot going on here i mean this guy it has gets the back pictures yeah yeah i mean um look this video gets back into the same theme we've talked about many times but in particular it seems to me that they were exploring new cave i guess they were laying that line Wow. I don't know if that line was already there. So they were, again, cave exploration, meaning they're going into areas that either don't have line already laid or no one's ever been in is a next level well, of let's cave see. diving. And Yeah, let's see what they say. And the other thing that um, is, uh, is notable is um, some of the commentary uh, about using oxygen versus air is right. important. That we clarify, we, we don't dive with pure oxygen, but we would bring oxygen into a cave and set it at 20 feet because at 20 feet, 
it's safe to breathe and it would help with your decompression if you had to bail out and go on to open circuit. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, so every time he's saying oxygen, he really means air. He means air in this particular case. But yeah, yeah line entanglement, you know, when you're a cave exploration, wow. I mean, it's a couple of these videos now. Have there said was that evidence that, was the that cause. the men attempted yeah. to untangle themselves yeah. as Barry was found still holding loops of the line in his hand. Yeah. yeah. A maximum depth indicator recovered from the pair showed that they had descended as far as 223 feet. Yeah, so. Authorities concluded that the men had probably stirred up the large amount of silt that was settled at the bottom of the dog's leg, lost all visibility, and subsequently became entangled in the guideline. The men were undoubtedly experiencing strong effects of nitrogen narcosis at these depths, and as the men were both diving using a single cylinder of oxygen, they had little hope of ever wow. untangling themselves from such a mess before they ran out of oxygen. And you know, air is one of proper air is one of the five rules of cave diving. Yeah. Having the proper amount of air, and both for your gas. depth and distance. So certainly that is absolutely a rule. Yeah. And one single tank of air at less at beneath a hundred feet, forget 165 and you're diving regular air. Most people feel narked below a hundred feet. Yeah. These guys said they went to what 165 feet. Yeah, 30 would, meters, and they went to 68. So 100. Uh, yeah, I would be uh, 200 or something like. Personally, that. I would be extremely narked. Yeah, drowned. The extreme depth and tangled ropes made recovering the bodies an arduous task, yeah. and it took police divers several days to remove both John and Barry's bodies from the site. In the aftermath of the incident. The general public and media once again began to question Crystal whether case. cave diving Beautiful. should be legal in Australia. We were there. And while no further restrictions were placed on the sport, the diving community took the pair's deaths as a harsh reminder that even experienced and certified cave divers must be cautious about the many hazards they face on their dives. Yes. Should be and cautious. And Australian cave yeah. divers clearly took this tragic reminder to heart as there was not another freshwater cave diving fatality in Australia again until 2010. So proceed. Thank you all for watching. So procedures are have been put in place, um, and that has significantly reduced the the tragedies like this. I think yeah. you said, what did you call it? Uh, blood learning, or yeah, yeah. Rules are written in blood. Yeah. Um, interesting. So, wow. So they just got tangled on the guideline. It seems like I don't think they were exploring. I, I don't know I don't if that know. was clear. It, sound, it sounded like to me they brought in their own line and got tangled in their own line. I could have sworn he said that. Yeah, the and other again, thing, that, the yeah. other reason why I said I don't think they were exploring is because they said they wanted to go early in the morning because he had an appointment at 10. If I'm cave exploring, I'm not meeting anyone at 10. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, I just, cave. I call, for me, I call cave exploring going into an area where there's not already set line. Right. If, if they were reeling out the line, which is what it sounded like to me, and going into a chamber where there is no line, that's another level. Oh, yeah. That's a high risk if you're not really trained to do that. I mean, yes, we can jump from one line to another, which, again, even setting a jump takes practice. You can yep. get entangled easily. You, there's ways that you're taught to how to hold the jump line, right? You know how we hold it out to our side. And you got to be really careful so you don't get it all entangled in your fence. Even that takes practice. Like we like to take turns. I'll be the line guy this time because we don't want to lose that skill. Yeah. These are all skills that take a lot of practice and training. Absolutely. So. And, um, you know, obviously back in the 70s, there wasn't a whole lot of certified cave divers. As a matter of fact, a lot of the cave diving legends that we look up to, they never got certified. They learn when there wasn't even a certification and they are now the cave diving instructors because they learn by doing um, and they survive that. But yeah, I mean, the danger is a lot of people that go in without being certified into these dangerous you know, places. Uh, we have actually reacted to a group of divers that went diving without cave diving training in Eagle's Nest which is a um, you know, very highly experienced requirement type of cave. It's called, it's called the Mount Everest of cave diving in Florida. Uh, it's located in Florida, and we actually reacted to their video. Luckily, no one died on that video. So spoiler alert, if you're looking for to see a death, uh, it didn't happen. But you can see the difference of what certified cave divers look like versus regular 
divers going into a cave in the video that I'm going to leave right here. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. This was interesting. I hadn't seen this video. That was pretty cool. I wasn't expecting the actual pictures of the divers uh, entangling the line. So that was an interesting uh, feature. And um, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.